Okay, so you just talked about our mentioned the, the uh, our PA system. We have these speaker. We have seven individual speakers hung here in a horizontal column. Why is that? What that's called a line array. We call that's that's like pretty modern technology. Most everyone is using line arrays these days. Tell us what benefit that has. Why do we hang the speakers in a vertical row like that? Yeah, vertical row. Yeah. And um, what is what does that help with? Why are we doing that? Um, so before, uh, I don't know, say back in the day, I'm not that old, but um, back in the day, uh, the way God intended speakers to be was what we called point source, um, which again, like, I think there's, yeah, you've got a single box out there yeah. for your, your side shot covering probably 50 Yeah, if you like your single speaker on a speaker stand, that's, that's a point source speaker, like it's one point of source, single thing, <laughs> point source. So that's, that before line array, uh, and I won't say line array theory because line array theory has been around for a very long time. I don't remember exactly when. Um, so line array theory is nothing new. There's nothing magical about it. Um, but before line arrays existed, um, point source uh, ruled the world in touring and installs. If you go into any old building now, it's you know what we call it a cluster of speakers pointed you know here, 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 and here. Like in this room, it might be three point sources to cover this section, that section, and that section. And at the time, it, point source, you're literally pointing it exactly where you want it to go. Um, and then over time, uh, we, we delved into to line array. So we took the line array theory, uh, mathematical principles, and applied it. If we put, you know, say seven of the same speakers all together uh, into one cluster or one array, because we don't really want to call it a cluster, um, before the point source boxes might be 50 degrees uh, vertical and 90 degrees horizontal. Uh, meaning, think of it like a flashlight covering, you know, a room. The dispersion of light, same with the dispersion of audio. Um, when we got into line arrays, uh, we took that 50 degrees of vertical maybe and turned it into 5 degrees. So now it's very focused beams of sound from each one, all of them working cohesively as one unit. So we're taking all the high frequencies uh, together and morphing it into a, a more cohesive output. Um, and it makes more sense when you, again, I'm visual, when you look at it from a side uh, plot, heat plot of a line array, it makes m way more sense because you see the output of it is way more evenly distributed than say a point source where you've got, again, the flashlight idea. You take a super bright flashlight, you point it somewhere in the room, you're gonna have that one hot spot and then everywhere else, it just kind of diminishes. Uh, the goal with line arrays was, let's take that hot spot, diminish it, spread it across a listening plane or listening planes uh, for more even distribution. And that, that's the simplest way to think of a line array. No, nothing magical is going on. It's just basic physics of we're taking like-minded uh, components, high frequencies, mids, lows, all together and distributing it m way more evenly. It's a lot of flashlights. Right, so it's about control and coverage. Okay, so uh, whether any room, this room, your high school auditorium, or an arena, we're gonna be, we want to be able to have the same volume on the front row to the top row in the back, okay? If we had the old, old style point source speakers, okay, let's, like he said, they were, mostly were, were about 90 degrees width, okay? So I've got my speaker aimed this way, I take my arm, 45 this way and 45 that way, and that's how wide that's covering. So it's really wide. Okay, so then I put another speaker over there, and at some point there's a lot of overlap between those, which is the, creates the comb filtering, which is not optimal, as we said. So with the line array technology, we're able to hang them, and as he said, instead of being 50 degrees of uh, vertical coverage, it's much narrower now, and as we add more speakers into the array, it, it creates more and more control for us. So we're able to control where those are going and uh, creates much less overlap and bleed and therefore a better product for more uh, of the audience, which is what we want. And, and from an audio designer standpoint too, uh, like this room, perfect example, you know, 30 years ago, this room, point source, you would have had uh, a couple boxes here, here and here. 
you may or may not have had delays. Delays uh, by meaning speakers hung uh, further usually back further in the back in the, the room, and we call them delays because you have to delay them to be in time with your mains. Um, you may have had all your speakers up front, some firing to the back, middle, and front, and you've, you, you will still see uh, point sources hung like that, you know, a box here, one hung under it with carabiners or steel, and one hung there to emulate sort of what, what a line array does, but you still have these big gaps and seams between them because you've got a 50 degree box, another 50 degree box, and another 50 degree box. And where they're overlapping is much broader, much wider, so the comb filtering zones are much wider. Uh, and you might have your top box to try to cover the back row. It might have to hit the back wall or the ceiling, which is, again, not desirable because you get uh, what we call slap back or returns. Uh, so with line array, you're able to focus the energy much uh, more controlled. Uh, so I want this to cover back row, stay off the wall, stay off the ceiling, whereas point source, uh, that was the other problem with it, was the, the pattern control uh, or directivity. Yeah. You'll pattern control directivity. We wouldn't be able to get audio every, everywhere we want it and nowhere we don't want it. And that's, that's what line arrays give us. Right. Great.